Thank you, Andres. A very brief comment on your uh, mentioning the the uh, gap, the increasing gap in terms of the needed numbers of professionals. Uh, the only way that I see out of this, and we're suffering from the same issue, we have 1,500 applications this for for our October entering class, and we only will be able to generate 200 fellowships. And every year this grows and grows. We generally maintain our our archives active for three years. We have 5,000 applicants from people from 162 countries all around the world who want to come and study at the postgraduate level that we can't serve. So the only way that we see out of it is in developing proactive partnerships with other educational institutions to introduce greater flexibility in, into our educational programs, to allow the transfer of credits both ways, to ensure that people have access to online courses or short courses to both reduce the time that it takes to get a formal degree or if they don't desire a formal degree to at least come up with the technical knowledge as part of their tool bag so that they can uh, participate in, in, in uh, solutions to the real problems that are being encountered. And the second point I would make is that we have to get over as educational institutions the issue of competition. We are not in competition with anybody for students. <laughs> We must collaborate uh, in an open source type of fashion, or we are all going to, uh, to fail together. Thank you very much, Richard. Um, but this leads us now to the next part of, the, of our discussion, uh, of the, the wrap-up session. And this is the, the data issue and, and, uh, and culture, culture and culture. We have identified the problems what we have pretty well. We, we also know the, the, the educational needs pretty well. What happened in the meantime, however, is that the number of data has gone down. The situation is critical in Africa. Today we have 30% less data in Africa about the hydrology of Africa than we had 20 years ago. Hydrological services, operational services are declining. Now politicians are talking about intelligent decision making, they are making nice decisions, long term plans. On what if there are no data? From data to knowledge and wisdom it's a long road, but no sustainable decision would be made without data. The data situation, for instance, in Africa is so bad that alone in Japan, there are more hydrological data about the hydrology of Japan than we have about the hydrology of Africa. We are calibrating huge global models, better patterns, Hydrological circulation, better circulation models, global circulation models, all those basically against the data we have in, in, in Western Europe and, and uh, in North America, with a huge marginal error that comes from Africa. It's, it's a global concern, and then we are building policies on things which are non existent. Of course it's a big issue, but it's a big issue for Africa itself because the, the associated risks that are coming from the lack of data are increasing, and that's bad. This is going to be the next issue, and I would like to invite Alif to take over from me and then uh, do the deliberations for the next two topics. Thank you. Just I would like to give the word uh, to Mr. Ricardo Martinez from National Water Commission from Mexico and uh, uh, he will sum up the topic issues but uh, what, will be the, what will be the subject for us to discuss on it? Data for all, which is very important uh, and uh, what we have been still discussing all uh, with 
some uh, other related issues. Okay, please, uh, just uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So we, we need to be creative on how, how we're going to go about that. 